Welcome back to the stone house. Sarah just dropped me off. She's gonna go home, get the kids some lunch. It's kind of late in the afternoon, Saturday. We had a couple things that we needed to get done this morning. And so she dropped me off and I'm gonna start working on making some more of this molding, specifically some end cap. I've got my said piece of wood here. This is kind of what I need to end up with. If I rip these like this, you go one, two, three. You can only get three out of a piece of wood. Now that I've got all these cut, now I'm, I'm gonna mark what I think should be the face. And that way I can try to keep it straight when I'm planing them all. Ready for the boulder. Driven by uncertainty, you know I'm the only thing to be alive. This is the third, third time.
This machine is made to work. You know? I think you could make molding with this all day. And, you know, you're going to see some chips, right? And you're going to think, oh, geez, the dust collection doesn't work very good. I emptied this can eight times, and this isn't even a quarter of a can, so really it catches probably 85%, if not 90% of all the chips. This is what it needs to look like when it's done done. Then it can fit together like this. See that? It's always nice to clean up a little bit when you're done with something like that. Gives you that full, complete feeling of complete like, doneness. Imagine doing that with no ear protection. No. You wouldn't be able to hear it ever again. No, you gotta wear ear protection with these machines. Ooh. For sure. So that that was the first time that you have really worked a significant, you know, hours yeah. and hours making molding. Mm -hmm. So you can see kind of what I did. Other than just the videos, it's not easy. No. Well, it's easy. It just takes forever. It's monotonous. Double high five? Well, no more high five. High five. High five. No. It's just such a good, you have reached... such a good feeling. What do you mean? Just to like... It's not done. Yeah, but Bye. Just, the day is done. Bye. Hey, you'll high five me. Come on, Dad. Dad won't ever high five anyone. I high five her twice already. It was uh this. Okay. Harder. <laughs> oh, that was a hit. <laughs> yeah. You wanna say bye to everybody? Bye. So we're going through the process of making the end cap and I wanted to show you the many steps I have to do for each piece to try to get consistent molding. First thing we do is, I'm doing just one piece at a time, it's just the way I want to do it, and just take it downstairs first. I'm doing is I have a piece of the casing right here and I like to check to make sure that it looks good so I just kind of do that make sure that there's no gap once I know that it's good then I put it in the dung pile and do the next one <laughs> So Sarah's kind of questioned why I'm doing just one at a time. She's usually right about things. I, I can't think of a time that she's wrong or has been wrong. I mean, she's right about the kids. She was right about getting married. She's made a lot of good decisions in her life. Um, so I am going to time how long it takes me to do one. And then I'm going to do five at a time and see how much faster it is. It'll be fun. A little experiment. Okay, you can probably see it took me one minute and 33 seconds or so to do just one of them. Now I'm going to do five of them and see how long it takes. So I did it twice just to get some good numbers. Six minutes, 50 seconds to do five pieces. It's important to point out too that the, the goal is not necessarily be as fast as you possibly can when you're doing something like this because you want to be safe. So I still took a time, I didn't run up and down the stairs. Six minutes, 50 seconds. I love this kind of stuff. One minute, 30 seconds a piece. And the other way was one minute, 33 seconds. All done. Well, that one's done. I, I have to make 40 or 50 pieces of this molding still. That's just that casing. 
But that, this uh, end cap piece really is the hardest molding to make. It takes the longest, it takes the most cuts, the most planing, everything. And to have 50 pieces of that ready to go makes me feel great. So now we can get cleaned up and go do something different. Mm -hmm. And I filled the holes on the... Mm -hmm. Good. It's too bad on camera every you know it looks really good in person, but on camera it really just looks washed out because everything's white. Oh uh, yeah. It's hard to yeah. see it. It'll look better once we paint the trim the color that it's gonna be. Which Sarah's, Sarah's decided. I am? Yeah, you've you're gonna do a neon purple. Is oh, that oh yeah. She's a big fan of purple. <laughs> so neon purple. <laughs> Polka dots, pink polka dots. No, I'm I'm a more like teal person. To be honest, we don't really know what color we're gonna paint it yet. I need to get a really little paintbrush to do around the yeah. hinge. Yeah, just paint the hinge white. I've seen painted hinges; they look cool. Oh uh, yeah. Let's paint those doors white. <laughs> oh wow, that look you just gave me. We can just paint one side white. Yeah. They've only lasted 150 years without paint. I mean, we might as well be the people that paint it. <laughs> it's just so cool. Every little spot. It really, once you paint it, it like I mean, look really how nice that looks. Molds it together. Can you even see that? Look how nice that looks. Like, look at that. I mean, it just looks like it should be here. Like, mm -hmm. it really looks just right. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Bonus footage. It's Thursday. We've been coming up to the house almost every single night this week. And uh, the kids are eating slash battling upstairs. You might hear them. Uh, we've been working on making molding. It's been fun. And... Today we're gonna just do some planing and I might add this to the video last second or not. We'll see, I don't know. This is that piece of molding. This is what we're gonna make a whole bunch of over the next couple days, not tonight. And what the first thing that we're gonna do is put it through the machine and put a back cut on it. That really makes a big difference. True. So what Sarah was just saying is, okay, well, it's a discussion that we've had for a long time is where the heck are the cats going to go potty? Because we have a, we have, what's it called? A litter box now. I don't like it. Um, so we're hoping that we can maybe put our new litter box downstairs. But then if there's a door here, cats aren't very good at opening doors. At least ours can't open doors. So Sarah just came up with a really good idea. She said, right on this wall, down in there, if you can see, yeah. Maybe we'll put like a little cat door and then they can go from in there and then get down cellar. It's a good idea. We'll have to make it small though because if it's any big enough, the kids will totally try to get it through there. They'll get their head stuck or something. <laughs> it's a good idea. I'd be only worried about maybe basement smell coming up here, but our basement doesn't smell really. It or doesn't you smell just like a dog door thing. Yeah, you, you could know? put a dog door on it. Ever since we did the concrete downstairs, it has changed the smell of the house dramatically. It smells like wood now and pine and you know, like new construction where before it smelled a little dirt. Or as you say in France, dirty. It hurts to do anything when you have a sliver. <laughs> That's funny because coming from someone that just cut themselves with a um, the table saw. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I told everybody. Oh, my sliver hurts. You just let the cat right out of that bag. I cut myself in the table saw. On purpose. I thought I had a saw stop, but it turns out I do not. <laughs> You know those fancy saws that stop automatically? Hey, let's talk about that. The saw stop, a really expensive table saw. The minute it senses skin, it instantly fires this mechanism into your blade and it stops it like instantaneously. 
and then you have to replace the mechanism and it's like $400, I would much rather have cut myself a little bit than have to pay $400. Yeah, but that little bit could have been a thumb bit. Your thumb is worth 400. Mm -hmm. Opposable thumbs. What, what? Like, how do you tell people to give you a thumbs up if you're missing your thumb? Listen, all I'm saying is I've, I'm becoming quite good at not using my thumb. I don't think I need it. You're using it. I'm going right to donate now. my thumb to science. How You're much? using it right now. A little bit. You want these black guides to be parallel. So the only way I know how to do that is you get them loose. And then you get a tape measure. You kind of just measure from the guide itself to the edge of the table. It's an inch and a half. Inch and a half. Hmm. What we've got here is the guide set up. The blade is in there and it's just kind of cutting center of the piece of wood. And now we can take the board out. And we're going to set our depth. When these are only going to be one pass each. Yeah, so you got your your wood that is per perfectly set here. I just I did that ahead of time. Um, your sheetrock is a little proud, so then you have that back cut, and it just goes like that, and it just goes right around the sheetrock, and it and it sits flush. And if you didn't have that back cut, it'd be more like this piece of wood that you can see it looks okay for some of it, but right here it's too high, and so the back cut really saves you. It gives you the professional appearance. Where's my mask? I don't wear masks yes, for this. Yes, you do. No, nope. this is big chunks of, of stuff. I, you just sneezed. I sneezed. That doesn't mean I need a mask. It means I need a tissue. Opening my eyes like opening a box of truth, and I'm putting on my vest like stepping out of a telephone booth, and I wait for an hour or two. Together, I can't do this forever, and I'm burning up my bed. That was fast. Yeah, uh, a back cut really doesn't take long. I can try to show you what I'm doing, I don't know. Basically, in there. I'm trying to line up the blades perfectly. Once I think I have it set, then I can throw a test piece through and hopefully they all look relatively the same. And I can't take off too much at one time. I actually want it to be right there, so I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna go to an inch. I feel like this is close. That is exactly seven eighths of an inch on the thick side. So that that piece is done. I think it turned out pretty good too. I've seen very nothing, you know, like no. It looks good. So at first there was a little bit of a thing here, a thingamajig, and it, it like a little shelf. 
and uh, we were worried about that, so we tried to adjust for it, and now it's gone. But this is, if every piece looked like this, I would be happy. Very happy. Happy, happy. And for the first time, Sarah saw it happen. We had a little bit of a tear out right there. So that's okay, they just cut that off. Huge shout out to everybody following us and supporting us on Patreon. We hit over a hundred Patreon people. Thank you so much. Woo! There you go. It's not done. We need to run all of these pieces through this machine two more times. But that's, that's not bad. Uh, that's actually a lot more than I thought we'd get done in an hour and a half. We, we haven't been here very long. Um, so yeah, tomorrow we'll come up, Friday, and we'll finish this. That means this weekend I will have, I think, all the molding done that I need done to, to do some molding upstairs. That's, that's awesome. I'm happy. All right. Ciao.